In this one, I'm going to be building the ultimate white themed gaming PC build. I've been waiting what feels like an eternity for a white 40 series card to land and we finally have one, courtesy of the people at MSI. So let's chuck it into a build, see how this thing performs and hopefully have a little bit of fun in the process. Let's do this. Xenion 32 inch gaming monitor is a panel that packs a punch, bringing your games and media to life on a vibrant ultra slim 32 inch IPS 4K display is a panel with some power. What's more, the fast 144Hz refresh rate and nippy 1 millisecond response time ensure you can keep a competitive edge. Learn more about the Xenion 32 UHD 144 at the first links in the description below and buy now on the Corsair web store. This video is going to be split into two core sections. First, I'm going to talk through the parts I've picked and why and build the system as I go. And then second, I'm going to look at performance a little bit later to make sure that these parts make sense from both an aesthetic, but also crucially a performance point of view. So let's start, shall we, by looking at the CPU and of course the motherboard. At the heart of this build is the Intel Core i5 13600K. The 13600K is still the best mid-range option out of Intel Intel and AMD's present options. Move to the higher end and the 7800X3D starts to make a bit of sense, but for this build it's simply too pricey. I'll be installing this into the MSI MPG Z790 Edge Wi-Fi, a mid-range Z790 motherboard, so that makes sense from like a price to performance point of view, but also a design that meets the white aesthetic I'm after in a build like this one. Now of course it isn't a white PCB, it's more the heat sinks and heat spreaders on the board itself, but it still ticks pretty much all the boxes. The IO is also really good, two and a half gig ethernet, 10 and 20 gig USB 3.2 Gen 2? 3.1 Gen 2, the latest USB standard alongside plenty of USB 3 ports and all important Wi-Fi 6E technology. Perhaps the most important feature though is support for our Intel 13th Gen processor and of course the ability to overclock it. Now to install any Intel CPU, simply lift the arm on the socket up and be careful not to touch the pins as these can be very, very delicate. Line up the CPU with the triangles touching one another, pop it into the socket, give it a slight wiggle but nothing too aggressive before returning in the cover down, applying some pressure and removing this black plastic. Then we're going to add the arm into place to clamp the whole thing and that's basically it. I'm also going to pop in the memory at this stage. I've got a 6,000 mega transfers a second kit of Kingston Fury Renegade. Now picking the right kind of DDR5 memory for this build wasn't too tricky. There is also some good white themed options from Corsair, their Vengeance, RGB and Dominator kits would both fit the bill, but the silver here ties in really nicely with the build. And the RGB up top means we can also go for some bright white lighting if we desire. Second and fourth dims are the ones I'll be using. And of course, remember this 32 gig kit can be expanded to 64 without the need to remove these two dims, making this a great upgrade path for those looking to build a higher end system as time progresses. In terms of storage, I've got a WD Black SN850. This particular drive is one terabyte. Enough for the latest AAA titles, a few important files, but you may want to add a hard drive drive or slow a secondary SSD in for a bit more mass storage. Now, of course, MSI, that was nearly a bad situation, are one of the only people who actually have a fully toolless M.2 installation method. I can simply push back the clip here, slide off the cover, remove the little plastic on the heat spreader and slide the drive into place. So I've not used one piece of equipment other than my hands for this installation so far. And then it's a simple case of adding in the cover back into place. Now this isn't always the easiest thing in the world, but a bit of practice. Aha, there we are. You can see aesthetically, this is starting to come together, but before I go gung ho and move the motherboard into the case, I'm also gonna go ahead and pop some of the brackets and installation on for the cooler, which is hiding just over here. Now, I talked earlier about wanting to overclock our 13600K, get a bit more clock speed, but I don't want to go ludicrous enthusiast levels of clock speed either. And although the i7 and i9 run hotter, especially AMD's Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9 equivalents, by the way, the i5 will be more than fine with a two 
40 mil cooler. Plus, it is of course white themed, matching the color scheme of today's build. In terms of what preparation I want to do, I just want to make sure that the back plate and all the other screws are already in place for the CPU cooler now, as doing it later can be a bit more fiddly. Look out for the bag labeled LGA1700 and pick out the bracket, these posts, and these screws from this included bag. Pop the back plate through the four holes on the rear of our MSI MPG motherboard design, and then add the threaded posts onto each of these corners here. So one, two, three, and four. The next order of business is to put the motherboard into the case. Now this is part of MSI's Gunier range, and it is of course one of the only all white chassis in every regard. Corsair are one of the only other brands to cotton onto this. If I want to buy a white case, I don't want gray accents. I want it to be all white. That plainly just makes more sense from an aesthetic point of view. Now, in order to install the motherboard into the case, take off all of the panels, front and rear, and stow these somewhere safe where you're not likely to tread on them anytime soon. Then take your motherboard and simply slide it into the chassis. The rear IO is gonna poke through this little square at the back, and the motherboard then should align nicely with all of the right holes and screw locations. The raised center standoff will then hold the whole motherboard in place, making it easier to screw in. Three screws at the top, three along the middle, and three down the bottom. The next order of business is to go ahead and finish the CPU cooler installation. Now, someone has very kindly put a few screws into the radiator for me, but not gone ahead and done, well, all of them. So I'm gonna finish by adding a few more screws in to make sure this thing is actually nice and secure and that these fans aren't gonna go anywhere before popping the rad back into the top of the case. I'm also then gonna pop the water block onto the CPU cooler, popping in those tensioned thumb screws and finishing things off with a screwdriver. Nice and simple and the wiring can be done later on. Once the cooler is in, it's finally time to take a look at this graphics card. Now, MSI tell me that, I'm not sure about other countries, but in the UK at least, they might not be selling this as a standalone item, which I think would be a terrible shame, but it is available as part of pre-builts and I'll link some of the great pre-builts featuring this graphics card below. For now though, this video is all about this absolute beauty. I'm so excited. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Oh, wow. Look at that. Is that not amazing? Oh my goodness. Now, the back plate is a bit silver. It's not all entirely white, but come on, that's about as white as we're gonna get. I'm so happy. Why don't more manufacturers, not only white, blue, red, green, I don't know, all graphics cards are all the same bleeding color. And it's nice to have something that's a little bit more, you know, a bit variety focused. Yes, I'm a happy man right now. Of course though, I can stop falling over MSI's graphics card and actually go ahead and install the graphics card into the build. Now to do that, I first need to just take out a couple of screws out the back of the case, one and two. Now the 4070 Ti is a card that I hope's gonna come down a bit in price to be honest with you. The recent 4070 release for me was actually personally quite impressive from Nvidia's part and their board partners, but I know that it has raised the 4070 Ti's value proposition slightly into question. So keep your eyes peeled hopefully for some price drops on this card. In order to actually get the thing installed, I need to take out the second and third PCI lanes. I am slightly worried about this graphics card fitting in the case. I'm sure I did check the measurements, but it's been a while since I did that and then since I ordered the actual parts to film this video. So here we go, moment of truth time. Oh, that looks tight. Gonna have to go in at an angle, quite a steep angle. Oh my goodness, that might be about as tight as we can probably get, but it fits. Bit of pressure, clip it in. Oh, it's triple slot. Oh dear. Right, I need to take out the third slot, everybody. I've got that wrong. So let's rest that there because I don't really fancy having to take it out again and making a mess of everything. Clip it in. Isn't she a beauty? Look at that. The only thing I think this build needs to actually finish it all off and make it look amazing is not only a white power supply, which is where the MSI A750GF white comes in, but also some custom white sleeve cable extensions. Now these are not expensive, way cheaper than cable mod, slightly worse quality, but still more than acceptable and come from a company called Easy DIY Fab. I'll link those down in the description below. This power supply though should have white cables too. So the extensions are more of a brucey bonus as opposed to a, a firm hardcore requirement. Now we've got motherboard cable there. Probably we'll need a SATA power cable for all the RGB and stuff. And CPU power, we'll need at least two of those for our overclocking 
interesting motherboard. PCI cable, I'm not exactly sure what's going on here yet. But let me figure out in our graphics card box how many PCIe 8 and 6 pin connectors we need. Okay, fair play, MSI, it's only two. So the splitter, while not ideal, isn't gonna look completely terrible. Oh my goodness, that looks amazing. I'm so excited. To see how good this thing really looks though, we need to turn it on, AKA the ultimate test, and then take a look at performance in the benchmarking section in just a moment. But before then, I think it's time for a special edition GeekaWatt Montage. into performance and it's time to see whether MSI's 4070 Ti, their white case, white cooler and everything else in this build stack up to perform well. As ever, we tested a wide range of titles on this system from Warzone 2 to Modern Warfare 2 to Apex, Fortnite and Formula 1 2022. Let's start off, shall we, with Warzone 2 at 1440p high, first of all. In this game with DLSS set to performance, this build achieved 148 frames per second on average. Enough to satisfy some slightly higher refresh rate monitors at 1440p and provide a fairly competitive gaming experience at this higher resolution. Move through into Fortnite at 1080p competitive settings and it was a similarly fantastic story. 305 frames per second on average here with everything tuned down to low except the render distance which was for competitive reasons set to far. In the next title in Apex Legends at 1440p high this build delivered an impressive 193 frames per second on average with solid 90 and 99th percentiles. Overwatch 2 also performed well, 4K Ultra, and the build came in with a strong 149 frames per second on average, while the likes of Battlefield 2042 also stacked up well. 1440p high, DLSS on the performance preset, and this build came in with a strong 134 FPS on average. Of course, I did also test some other games. Formula 1 2022 is one of my personal favourites, and at 1440p Ultra high with DLSS on, of course, its latest 3.0 iteration with frame generation enabled and ray tracing set to high, the system brought in 165 FPS on average. Competitive frame rates across the board then in these popular titles. And of course, if there's any other games you'd like to see us include, let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to get subscribed. Thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.